Fun? Okay. We're going to talk about the five different ways to look at a number. We always use the analogy, your fancy pants versus your regular pants. Your regular pants way to look at a number is just a number. Dude, it's just a number. And if we're going to be in a technical term, we're going to call it standard notation. Standard notation just means it's a number, like every other number you've ever seen. The other really easy one is written form, which is just words. It's not numbers, it's words. So we're going to go with 200 48 and 17 hundredths. The most important thing to know about written notation is the and. The and goes where the decimal goes, so that we know after we pass this and, we're talking about smaller than one. Pieces that are smaller than our whole numbers. Um, the other most important thing to remember about written notation is spelling counts. I really hope if this is going on YouTube, I spelled all those words right. If not, I'm gonna get all kinds of comments about not being able to spell. Um, spell your words right. People need to learn how to spell. You know what I mean? If you spell the word wrong, it's going to look funky, it's not going to look right. And the other thing you need to know is thing number three. This is not something you're going to have to do very often. This is not something we can do math with. You're not going to put this underneath a long division sign and be able to actually do anything with it. So this is not something you're going to see often, but it is definitely a skill that you need. The third way to look at a number is base 10, where we talk about Dots, rods, flats, and cubes. This gives us an actual way to put our hands on place value. One is one. A rod is ten ones all added together. A flat is ten tens all added together. And a cube is 10 flats all added together, and it gets bigger exponentially. We'll remember that because that means a number of times itself. Exponentially means this is 10 times bigger than one. This 10, the 100 is 10 times bigger than that. This cube is 10 flats. So it moves up by exponents are powers of 10 each time just like place value. Now the kicker on that one is we can't do these. We're not going to try to divide this dot into 10 equal pieces. We'll end up with dust. So for our number 248, we would have two flats for 200. We would have four rods for four tens. And we would have eight dots for our eight ones. And we can't do our, our decimals because it's way too small. This is regular pants, this is regular pants, this is pretty regular pants. Now our pants are gonna have to start getting a little fancy. Spanded notation looks fancy pants, but really, you're just gonna take each one of these pieces and create a math problem that turns into this number. We've got two in our hundreds place. We've got our placeholder zeros here, because if we lose these two zeros, it becomes two instead of 200. And if you want to think about how important that is, think about dollars. Two dollars is a lot less than two hundred dollars. To that, we're going to add our tens place, which is 40. Our placeholder zero right here. Remember, placeholder zero means I don't have my four and my eight if I'm separating this into pieces, but I don't want to change what my hundred is worth. So we're holding the places for the four and the eight with zeros. And then I'm going to need my decimal for my one-tenth. Then I'm going to need my decimal and another placeholder zero, because I don't have this one-tenth here, to hold my seven-hundredths into place. So, 
what looks like fancy pants, it's not all that fancy. It's just our, we're creating a math problem with our pieces. We're going to get tuxedo pants here with exponents. These are some fancy pants. They do the exact same job as all these other things. We're still just going to talk about how our number is put together, but it looks a lot fancier. And expanded with exponents, we're going to create a math problem where I say 2 times 10 to the second. 10 to the second is 10 times 10. That's 100. 2 times 100 equals 200. So this looks much more fancy, but it's actually the exact same thing. And if you're not a math person like I'm not a math person, the easiest way to remember this is 2 with two zeros after it. 10 to the second means two zeros after. Just like my four is going to be times 10 to the one, 10 to the first, because it's a four with one zero after it. And my eight is going to be times 10 to the zero, because it has no zeros after it. It's just an eight. Now, we could do negative exponents. We're not scared of negative exponents. We could turn that negative exponent and we could say 1 times 10 to the negative first. But instead of this, we're going to use something that all fifth graders are much more familiar with. We're going to use a fraction. And we're just going to call it 1 tenth. Because this 1 tenth is the exact same thing as this one-tenth. And in fact, if you look at this and I say, what is it? You'll say one-tenth. And if you look at this, you'll look at it and say, what is it? One-tenth. They literally have the same name because they're literally the same thing. And we're going to do the same thing here for our hundredths. Seven times one hundredth. We step back and take a look at that. That's some pretty fancy looking pants. There's a lot going on with this. But just like regular fancy pants, an old pair of sweatpants or a pair of tuxedo pants do the exact same job. You put them on one leg at a time the exact same way. Even though this looks a little fancier, all you've really got is 200, 40, 8, and 17 one hundredths. Make sense? Or? Sure.